hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video i will be going over the part of fiscal year 2023 hospital inpatient and long-term care hospital prospective payment system final rule that pertains to the quality reporting programs let's dive right in hospital inpatient quality reporting or iqr program in the fiscal year 2023 Inpatient Prospective Payment System slash Long-Term Care Hospital Prospective Payment System Final Rule CMS is adopting 10 measures, refining two current measures, making changes to the existing electronic clinical quality measure, reporting and submission requirements, removing the zero denominator declaration and case threshold exemptions for hybrid measures, updating their electronic clinical quality measure validation requirements, for medical record requests and establishing reporting and submission requirements for patient reported outcome based performance measures. CMS also requested comment on the potential future adoption of two centers for disease control and prevention's national health care safety network or NHSN measures. Specifically, CMS is adopting Hospital Commitment to Health Equity Measure beginning with the calendar year 2023 reporting period slash fiscal year 2025 payment determination. Screening for social drivers of health measure and screen positive rate for social drivers of health measure beginning with voluntary reporting in the calendar year 2023 reporting period and mandatory reporting beginning with the calendar year 2024 reporting period slash fiscal year 2026 payment determination. CMS is also adopting two perinatal electronic clinical quality measures, cesarean birth and severe obstetric complications available for self-selection beginning with the calendar year 2023 reporting period slash fiscal year 2025 payment determination followed by mandatory reporting beginning with the calendar year 2024 reporting period slash fiscal year 2026 payment determination. Hospital harm opioid related adverse events electronic clinical quality measure beginning with the calendar year 2024 reporting period slash fiscal year 2026 payment determination. The global malnutrition composite score electronic clinical quality measure beginning with the calendar year 2024 reporting period slash Fiscal Year 2026 Payment Determination CMS is also adopting Hospital Level Total Hip Arthroplasty or THA and slash or Total Knee Arthroplasty or TKA Patient Reported Outcome Performance Measure beginning with two voluntary reporting periods which run from July 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 and July 1st of 2024 through June 30th, 2025, followed by mandatory reporting for the reporting period, which runs from July 1st of 2025 through June 30th of 2026, impacting the fiscal year 2028 payment determination. Hospital level risk standardized complication rate following elective primary total hip arthroplasty slash total knee arthroplasty measure beginning with the fiscal year 2024 payment determination. CMS is also adopting Medicare spending but beneficiary hospital measure beginning with the fiscal year 2024 payment determination. CMS is also defining two measures that are currently part of the hospital inpatient quality reporting program measure set beginning with the fiscal year 2024 payment determination which are hospital level risk standardized payment associated with an episode of care for primary elective total hip arthroplasty and slash or total knee arthroplasty measure and access days in acute care after hospitalization for acute myocardial infarction measure. CMS requested comment on the potential future inclusion of two digital NHSN measures. Healthcare Associated Clostridioides Difficile Infection Outcome Measure and Hospital Onset Bacteremia and Fungemia Outcome Measure. CMS provided a summary of comments received in the final rule 
and will use that input to inform potential future policy development. Additionally, CMS is updating two policies related to electronic clinical quality measures. First, they are modifying the electronic clinical quality measure validation policy to increase the submission requirement from 75% to 100% of the requested medical records to successfully complete electronic clinical quality measure validation beginning with the fiscal year 2025 payment determination. Second, they are modifying the electronic clinical quality measure reporting and submission requirements to increase electronic clinical quality measure reporting from four electronic clinical quality measures one mandatory and three self-selected to six electronic clinical quality measures, three mandatory and three self-selected beginning with the calendar year 2024 reporting period slash fiscal year 2026 payment determination. CMS is also removing the zero denominator declarations and case threshold exemptions policies for hybrid measures beginning with the fiscal year 2026 payment determination. Lastly, CMS is establishing submission and reporting requirements for patient reported outcome measures beginning with the fiscal year 2026 payment determination specifically for the total hip arthroplasty slash total knee arthroplasty patient reported outcome measure being finalized in this final rule since this is a new measure type for the hospital inpatient quality reporting program. Medicare Promoting Interoperability Program In 2011, CMS established the Medicaid and Medicaid EHR incentive programs now known as the Promoting Interoperability Programs for eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals to encourage eligible professionals, eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals to adopt, implement, upgrade, and demonstrate meaningful use of certified EHR technology. With this rule, CMS is finalizing the following changes to the Medicare Promoting Interoperability Program for eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals. Make mandatory the electronic prescribing objectives query of prescription drug monitoring program or PDMP measure, adding a third exclusion to the two that they proposed expand the measure to include not only Schedule II opioids but also Schedule III and IV drugs and maintain the associated points at 10 points. Add a new enabling exchange under the Trusted Exchange Framework and Common Agreement measure under the Health Information Exchange objective as a yes-slash-no attestation measure beginning with the EHR reporting period in calendar year 2023 as an optional alternative to the three existing measures under the HIE objective. Add a new antimicrobial use and resistance or AUR surveillance measure and require its reporting under the public health and clinical data exchange objective beginning with the calendar year 2024 EHR reporting period. Beginning with the calendar year 2023 EHR reporting period Reduce the active engagement options for the public health and clinical data exchange objective from three to two options. Beginning with the calendar year 2023 EHR reporting period, require submission of the level of active engagement in addition to submitting the measures for the public health and clinical data exchange objective. Beginning with the calendar year 2024 EHR reporting period, require eligible hospitals and critical access hospitals to limit the duration of their time on level of active engagement option one to a single EHR reporting period. Institute public reporting of certain Medicare promoting interoperability program data beginning with the calendar year 2023 EHR reporting period. Beginning with calendar year 2023 EHR reporting period CMS will increase the public health and clinical data exchange objective from 10 to 25 points, increase the points associated with the electronic prescribing objective from 10 to 20, reduce the points associated with the health information exchange objective from the current 40 points to 30 points and reduce the points 
associated with the provide patients electronic access to their health information from the current 40 to 25 points. Adopt two new electronic clinical quality measures to the Medicare Promoting Interoperability Program's ECQM measure set beginning with the calendar year 2023 reporting period and two new ECQMs beginning with the calendar year 2024 reporting period in alignment with the Hospital Inpatient Quality Reporting Program. Modify the ECQM reporting and submission requirements to increase electronic clinical quality measure reporting from four ECQMs, one mandatory and three self-selected to six ECQMs, three mandatory and three self-selected beginning with the calendar year 2024 reporting period in alignment with the hospital inpatient quality reporting program. PPS exempt cancer hospital quality reporting or PCHQR program. The PCHQR program is a voluntary quality reporting program for the 11 cancer hospitals that are statutorily exempt from the inpatient prospective payment system. CMS collects and publishes data from PPS exempt cancer hospitals on applicable quality measures. In the fiscal year 2023 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital prospective payment system final rule, CMS is finalizing that it will begin public display of the 30-day unplanned readmissions for cancer patients measure PCH36 and the four end-of-life measures which are PCH32, PCH33, PCH34 and PCH35. CMS is adopting and codifying a patient safety exception into the measure removal policy and acknowledging comments received from stakeholders on the request for information in the proposed rule regarding the potential future adoption of two digital national healthcare safety network or NHSN measures. The NHSN healthcare associated prostodioides difficile infection outcome measure and NHSN hospital onset bacteremia and fungemia outcome measure. Measure pausing or refinement policies in response to COVID-19 public health emergency in certain value-based purchasing programs. Since the COVID-19 public health emergency is ongoing, CMS will pause or refine several measures in the Hospital Readmissions Reduction Program or HRRP, Hospital Acquired Condition or HAC Reduction Program and Hospital Value-Based Purchasing or VBP Program. These policies are intended to ensure that these programs do not reward or penalize hospitals based on circumstances caused by the public health emergency for COVID-19 that the measures were not designed to accommodate. Examples of the types of external factors that the public health emergency has had that may affect quality measurement include changes to clinical practices to accommodate safety protocols for medical personnel and patients as well as unpredicted changes in the number of patient stays and facility level cases. Hospital Readmissions Reduction Program or HRRP. The HRRP is a Medicare value based purchasing program that reduces payments to hospitals with ex access readmissions. It also supports CMS's goal of improving healthcare for Medicare beneficiaries by linking payment to the quality of hospital care. In the fiscal year 2023, inpatient prospective payment system slash long term care hospital prospective payment system final rule. CMS is resuming the hospital 30-day all-cause risk-standardized readmission rate following pneumonia hospitalization measure beginning with the fiscal year 2024 program year following the pause of this measure, which was previously finalized for fiscal year 2023. CMS is modifying the hospital 30-day all-cause risk-standardized readmission rate following pneumonia hospitalization measure to exclude patients with COVID-19 diagnosis present on admission from the measure numerators or outcomes and denominators or cohorts beginning with the fiscal year 2024 program year. Confidential hospital feedback reports for this measure will include this modification for the fiscal year 2023 program year, although the measure has been paused from being used 
for payment calculation for the fiscal year 2023 program year, CMS will still be calculating and publicly reporting this measure. CMS is modifying all six conditions slash procedure specific readmission measures to include a risk adjustment for history of COVID-19 within 12 months prior to the index admission beginning with the fiscal year 2024 program year. Additionally, CMS sought and received public comment on promoting health equity through possible future incorporation of hospital performance for socially at-risk populations into the hospital readmissions reduction program, which will be used to inform future policy development. Hospital Acquired Condition or HAC Deduction Program The HAC Deduction Program creates an incentive for hospitals to reduce the incidence of hospital acquired conditions by reducing payment by 1% for applicable hospitals that rank in the worst performing quartile on select measures of hospital acquired conditions. In the fiscal year 2023 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital prospective payment system final rule, CMS is pausing the patient safety and adverse event measures, CMS PSI 90 measure, and the five CDC NHSN Healthcare Associated Infection or HAI measures from the calculation of measure scores and the total HAC score, thereby not penalizing any hospital under the HAC deduction program, fiscal year 2023 program year. CMS is publicly and confidentially through hospital specific report reporting CDC NHS and HAI measure results. CMS is calculating and publicly reporting the CMS PSI 90 measure displayed on the main pages of the Care Compare tool hosted by HHS after confidentially reporting these results to hospitals with a 30-day preview period. CMS is pausing calendar year 2021 CDC NHS and HAI measure data from the fiscal year 2024 HAC deduction program year. CMS is also making a technical update to the measure specification to adjust the minimum volume threshold for the CMS PSI 90 measure beginning with the fiscal year 2023 program year. CMS is making a technical update to the CMS PSI 90 measure specifications to risk adjust for history of COVID-19 diagnosis beginning with the fiscal year 2024 program year. CMS is also updating the NHS and CDC HAI data submission requirements for newly opened hospitals beginning with the fiscal year 2024 HAC program year and clarifying the removal of the no map location policy beginning with the fiscal year 2023 program year. Additionally, CMS requested and received information from stakeholders on the potential future adoption of two digital national healthcare safety network or NHSN measures, the NHSN Healthcare Associated Close to the OED's Difficile Infection Outcome Measure and NHSN Hospital Onset Bacteremia and Fungemia Outcome Measure. Hospital Value-Based Purchasing or VBP Program the hospital VBP program is a budget neutral program funded by reducing participating hospitals base operating MSDRG payments each fiscal year by 2% and redistributing the entire amount back to the hospitals as value based incentive payments. In this final rule, CMS is pausing the hospital consumer assessment of healthcare providers and systems or HCAPs and five hospital acquired infection or HAI measures for the purposes of scoring and payment for the fiscal year 2023 program year. As a result of the above measure pauses for the fiscal year 2023 program year, less than half of the hospital VBP program measures will be available for accurate scoring. Therefore, CMS will also not calculate a total performance score or TPS for any hospital and instead award all hospitals a value-based payment amount for each discharge that is equal to the amount withheld. CMS will also calculate measure rates for all measures and publicly report those rates where feasible and appropriately caveated. 
CMS will also update the baseline periods for certain measures for the fiscal year 2025 program year. CMS also announced in the final rule technical administrative updates to the measures included in the clinical outcomes domain. Long-Term Care Hospital Quality Reporting Program or LTCHQRP The LTCHQRP or Long-Term Care Hospital Quality Reporting Program is a pay-for reporting program. Long-Term Care Hospitals that do not meet reporting requirements are subject to a 2 percentage point reduction in their annual payment update. In the fiscal year 2023 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital prospective payment system proposed rule, CMS requested information on inclusion of the National Healthcare Safety Network or NHSN Healthcare Associated Clostridioides Difficile Infection Outcome Measure in the LTCH Quality Reporting Program. Overarching principles for measuring equity and healthcare quality disparities across CMS quality programs. While CMS is not responding to comments in the final rule, CMS will continue to take all concerns, comments, and suggestions into consideration as CMS continues work to ad address and develop policies on these important topics. With regard to health equity, public input is very valuable to the continuing development of CMS's health equity quality measurement efforts and broader commitment to health equity, which is a key pillar of their strategic vision as well as a core agency function. The CMS will use this input for future development and expansion of policies to advance health equity across the long-term care hospital quality reporting program, including by supporting long-term care hospitals in their efforts to ensure equity for all of their patients and to identify opportunities for improvements in health outcomes. Revision to conditions of participation for hospitals and critical access hospitals to report data elements for COVID-19 and seasonal influenza. CMS is revising the hospital and critical access hospital infection prevention and control condition of participation requirements that require hospitals and critical access hospitals after the conclusion of the current COVID-19 public health emergency to continue reporting on a reduced number of COVID-19 data elements. The revisions will apply upon conclusion of the COVID-19 public health emergency and continue until April 30th of 2024 unless the Secretary establishes an earlier ending date. This is it for today. Thank you for joining me. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing to my channel and leave me a few comments. Hope to see you next time. Bye now.